Good morning. I'm Pastor Dan Cave of Christ Lutheran Church of Warren, Michigan, affiliated with Lutheran Congregations in Mission for Christ and the North American Lutheran Church. On a personal note, as I looked in the mirror today, I suddenly realized that I have all this gray hair. And then I remembered I haven't had a haircut for over two months. If you want to see what I look like, go back to our Palm Sunday service and you can see why I think I have more gray hair now than I had then. Thank you all for tuning in to this Ascension Sunday Memorial Weekend Worship Service. We welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen and ascended Lord, and we pray. Bless us, O oh God, with a reverent sense of your presence that we may be at peace and may worship you with all our mind and spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our special congregational prayer concerns today continue for Norm, Phyllis, Doris, Carol, Eleanor, Michelle, Joe, Callie, and my mother-in-law, Dorothy Kohler. This church remains closed for worship and all activities until further notice. We ask you to please pray for God's guidance as leadership explores reopening for public worship services. Watch for updates on our church website by email or regular mail and keep watching our services every Sunday starting at 8 a.m. on this YouTube channel. Looking ahead to next Sunday, which is Pentecost, May 31st. We again will be offering individual in-home and communion kits for your use. If you'd like to reserve a kit, please call the church office by next Thursday, May 28th, and then drive by the church to pick your kits up at the north driveway entrance of the church between 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. on Saturday, May 30th. Now, in observance of Memorial Day, our flag and memorial wreath are presented in person by Mr. and Mrs. John Nelson.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with songs of joy. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our sovereign Lord. God is sovereign over all the earth. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Let everything that has breath sing praises and shout to God with loud songs of joy. Let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son was taken up into heaven and in power intercedes for us. May we also come into your presence and live forever in your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. chapter of Acts. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commandments through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. <clears throat> he presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, 
but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be The second lesson is from the first chapter of Ephesians. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give you thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation to the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, and what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might that has worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all and all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this Ascension Sunday is from St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses and the Prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And Jesus led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ.
You've seen it in pictures, videos, and news reports. It's deeper than the joy of a victorious sports team coming home with a championship trophy. It's better than the joy of one's first homecoming reunion. It is the joy of a returning member of our nation's armed forces coming home safe and sound. It's the joy of coming home to one's country and loved ones. It's knowing that the sacrifice made not only by that military personnel, but also by those who made the ultimate sacrifice was worth it. We at home are safe from enemies who were intent on our destruction. That joy isn't only filling the hearts of returning service members, but also those who have benefited from their service, especially that person's family members. This Memorial Day weekend, a proud and grateful nation honors all our active duty military members, reservists, and veterans from all service branches, living and deceased, for their courageous service and sacrifices made to protect our lives and our freedom. Today we also observe the important church festival of the Ascension of our Lord. And our lessons suggest all the hellos and goodbyes that come into our lives. Think about all those special hellos. When you said hello to your child or grandchild for the very first time. When you laid eyes on the love of your life the first time or greeted your beloved pet for the first time. Those are special hellos to be cherished forever. It's the same with some special goodbyes we have. Some may have had good feelings affiliated with them, like saying goodbye to your mortgage or your car loan or your student loans after making the last payment, or to the doctors and nurses as you leave the hospital after a surgery or long illness. But other goodbyes evoke painful feelings, saying goodbye to a loving one, to a marriage or long-time relationship or friendship that couldn't be saved, or having to say goodbye to your home of many years as you move into assisted living. Life is full of hellos and goodbyes, many routine and uneventful, but some are life-changing. Jesus' disciples never had an opportunity to say goodbye to him before his death on the cross. Everything happened so fast that holy week. After he was arrested, tried, and tortured, they all scattered in fear without saying goodbye. So their great joy, we heard in the gospel, in meeting the risen Christ makes sense to us because even despite their fears, denials, and failures, the relationship Jesus established with them could never be undone. In today's first lesson from Acts, we learn that the disciples had shared 40 days with Jesus after his resurrection, talking with him about the kingdom of God. Finally, it was time for him to return to heaven, so he prepared them for the great gift that his father would be sending them, the gift of a helper, a counselor, the Holy Spirit. Jesus tells them that they are going to receive power from on high, and that great power will make them his witnesses and propel them into all the world to proclaim the good news of his death and resurrection for the forgiveness of sin and eternal life. Then Jesus left this earth to return to God the Father. 
It was a profoundly good and holy goodbye that Ascension Day. One that healed and made up for all the pain and grief that came from his suffering and death. So we might be tempted to join the disciples, standing around, staring up, and waiting for something to happen. But as they stand staring up, two men, angels, wearing white clothing, suddenly stood beside them and asked, Why do you stand looking into heaven? The ascension of our Lord is indeed a special day to celebrate in the church year. Jesus fulfilled all of God's will and promises perfectly for us. His work was over and he needed to return to his Father to rule the whole universe with him from his throne in heaven. But this isn't the time for the church to just soak it in. To stand around, stare at the sky, and do nothing. Is that what we, the church, can fall into? Standing around, staring up, waiting for Jesus to come back and fix everything for us? Because we see much brokenness. Marriages, families, illnesses, hatred, pandemics, war, terrorism, anxiety, addictions, and a restless sense of dis-ease. The world is still a mess that only Jesus Christ can fix. Yet his mission and his ascension gives us a mission and a promise to accomplish. What's the mission? It's the kingdom work of Christ the King reigning from the world from on high. His ascension transforms us from spectators to active workers with him in his saving mission. It changes us from those who only receive Jesus to those who have been empowered, equipped, and sent out to share the gospel and love, serve, and bless others. And what's the promise? That Jesus hasn't left us alone to do his mission alone. Next Sunday is Pentecost Day, the day we celebrate when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the disciples and the church began, giving us all the power we need to do what Jesus called us to do, to seek and save the lost, the least, and everyone wounded by sin, death, and evil. Long ago in the Civil War, the story is told of the actions of an army nurse who became the subject of great concern. After a battle, she often wandered away from the medical tent and went out into the battlefield. She'd often return with a soldier who especially needed medical help. It made no difference to her if the wounded were Union or Confederate. She just went out and brought them back. But her actions earned her a reprimand from her commanding officer. But after that reprimand, the next big battle came, and she was again seen wandering around in the combat zone seeking those who had been wounded. Her officer scolded, you've been instructed and reprimanded. What do you think you're doing out there on? But before he could finish, she stopped him with an icy glare, then snapped back at in her own commanding voice, saying, What am I doing? I'm looking for the wounded. Looking for the wounded is what I do. That nurse knew her mission. She knew what she was looking for and would not stop. And that is how it is to be for the church in mission. Pentecost isn't just something we celebrate and worship one Sunday a year. It is a whole way of life and discipleship. Our real power and mission comes from on high as the Holy Spirit is poured out on us in the first water of baptism. Every baptized Christian is already empowered to become the witness 
that Christ calls us to be, and that same power from above is always renewed in us daily. So on this Ascension Sunday, Jesus challenges us to stop standing around, staring up and waiting for something to happen. He's coming back to judge the living and the dead. We've got our spirit-driven mission to share our faith in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who died and rose again to forever set us free from the power of sin, death, and evil, starting with our families, fanning out to our friends, co-workers, neighbors, communities, and beyond. Especially now, in this time of fear, worry, risk, uncertainty, and frustration, the church and all of us must boldly seek and save the lost among us and around us. We all must pray and learn from Christ how to become the church in mission and in loving service. Make no mistake, you and I have a Christ-centered mission and promise, and we have the Holy Spirit's power to help us do it. So today we say goodbye to Jesus as he physically left the earth, but we also say hello to his continuing presence in the power of the Holy Spirit, who dwells with us and in us, transforming us into the body of Christ in and for the world. And to that we say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With joyful confidence, let us approach our Lord's throne of grace, there to pray on behalf of the church, the world, and all people according to their need. O God, beyond all praising, we worship you and adore you. You have revealed your glory through your Son, who has risen and ascended, and who reigns at your right hand forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your church abide in Jesus, as he abides in you. Cause it to preach the gospel of salvation, and celebrate the sacraments according to the gospel. Let it proclaim to the whole world your blessings without number and your mercy without end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Unite our hearts with fellow disciples of your Son and with missionaries of your gospel. Let us all be so united to your beloved Son and with each other that in everything we glorify your name and spread the goodness of your mercy throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let the radiance of our beautiful Savior fill the hearts and sanctify the ministries of this congregation. Make our worship into a joyful duty and our service into a sacrifice of praise. Use us to lead others to Jesus, that with us they may worship, honor, bless, and adore him. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. On this Memorial Day weekend, we lovingly commend into your care all our beloved dead, especially those who gave their life in service of this nation. Keep their memories fresh and bright. Spur us to deeds of faithfulness, generosity, and self-sacrifice, and hasten the day when war shall end evil vanquished, every tear wiped away, and you are truly all in all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have appointed your Son as King of creation and Lord of the nations. Teach all our leaders to praise your name, to love justice and righteousness, and to seek those things that make for peace. Come to the help of those who whose lives are troubled by sorrow and hardship, especially everyone afflicted with COVID-19 and its consequences, and draw all people into the glorious and gentle rule of Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep in your care all who stand in harm's way, to right wrongs, establish safety, and protect life and liberty. Prosper all they do that serves your will. Bring them home safely and soon. Heal those who are wounded. Help us value their skills and insights when they return to civilian life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our hearts to you on behalf of all whose lives are clouded by any sort of affliction or sorrow including those named earlier in the service and those we now name silently before you. Let the light of Jesus Christ heal and cheer them. 
Let all who care for them do so with tenderness and compassion, and grant that together we may praise you for your unending mercies. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, those who have died trusting in your promises now see their beautiful Savior face to face. Thank you for bestowing this blessing on them. Continue to show us your love. Bring us into that endless life and light that you share with all whom you have redeemed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise and magnify you, most holy Father. We entrust our prayers and petitions to you in the strong name and for the dear sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we dedicate our tithes and offerings to the Lord as we sing, Create in Me.
peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.